So tonight in the happiest place in Northeast Ohio could have been a hell of a lot better. But tomorrow for the Sandy Ridge randomness, not the Sandy Ridge randomness, uh, fall randomness video for the very last official warm day of 2024. Because we already took care of the YouTube version of that when we sent my you know, friends off to homecoming in Ridgeville for the class of 2027. Um, we got the last, very official, last actual warm, warm day of 2024. Because Halloween, we're staying in the house and, you know, watching the Spurs, you know, play the jazz in Utah. And then Friday, we're, le we're getting an early dismissal to go get a haircut with my father, you know. You know, that first day of ret retirement, that by the way, you know, um, to, um, yeah, I'm not going to say that here. I'm not going to say that here. I have to be mindful of what I say, um, you know, and, and depending on what, what I say beforehand. But yeah, so the, I'll try to do a haircut video then. So make sure we you know, keep ourselves busy on that with uh, our foot on the gas in that department. And then Saturday, then we play the Wolves and, and, and San Antonio at SBC Center for against Sydney Serena as you know Minnesota Timberwolves so shout out to you Sydney I'll be tagging you like crazy when your team plays my team considering I'm a Spurs fan living in Cleveland of 28 years I may live in Ohio but my team is in San Antonio we'll get to the moment the top the, get to the point a little bit Sunday we got the Old Dominion 500 it's most people are expecting it to be a snooze fest I am too but if it turns out to be a slug fest after what everybody else but me saw in the Ford 400 this past weekend then good I'm all for it then everybody will be desperate to get into the championship for it to check out a parts 500 which will most likely be a snooze fest more of a snooze fest than Martin than the Old, Old Dominion 500 if anything but Crazier things have happened in the sport of NASCAR, just like how crazy things have happened in the in the in the uh, sport of basketball. That being the NBA, and then Monday, you look look at the forecast. It's looking like a three day Sandy Ridge finale after the Old Dominion Five Hundred. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then we think provisionally we're off to the cold weather full time. But it's a 50-50 chance that after, sometime after the Chuck Art of Parts 500, like at least one time before the Thanksgiving festivities start with Maeve Walsh's Friendsgiving and Thanksgiving with the Oliverises the next week, we could get a Sandy Ridge walk-off. I mean, most likely won't, knowing my luck, because I'll, I'll know to conserve my health this year. But guess what? The one year we conserve our health that you know, to try to make up for last year, we don't get it. Considering when we actually got it without without knowing we we had there that could have had a fifty fifty chance of happening, which obviously didn't occur in twenty twenty one and twenty two. But the first year it occurred, we couldn't take advantage of it because we didn't dress accordingly for that disastrous official finale, so initial, which was an, the initial you know go closure, which it was an abysmal it was an abysmal finale, it was an abysmal season as we all know. But that's either here or there. Um, yeah, the one year we actually. I'm trying to conserve our health to make it just in case it happens, it doesn't happen. But you just never know. You just never. We didn't know we were going to get at least one last night's day after that disastrous finale, whether we just accordingly conserved our health or not. So, but hey, we didn't know. At least we know for the future how to become prepared just in case. So we will be monitoring the weather for the like the like the rest of this month and all of November until the week of the Thanksgiving festivities. But you know, if we don't get it, we'll just go straight to the Friendsgiving with Maeve Voss. Simple as that. So, therefore, because Winter Wonderland Season 4 is around the corner. When, um, Christmas season is around the corner. Winter itself is around the corner. Basketball season in the nation is around the corner. So, there's a lot to look forward to as we get, re oh, get ready to shift gears to the cold weather full time. But now let's get to the point, the elephant in the room, where we go over... Last night's Spurs game versus the cheating McDouchebags, better known as the Houston Rockets, in San Antonio at SBC Center. So, it was round two of, um, you know, the this is the second game against them, but we're going to have it 12 nights. The first one was on Saturday. Keep in mind, I had a basketball game. I actually played in two of them, in which, you know, it really took a toll on me. Um, the first game, as we all know, was an, was a, was a, was an abomination. And then I got recruited to help another, help another team. And I played a lot better in that one than I did for my own squad. It's like, why can't I do that for my own squad? I don't know. But at least we know for January 2025 to hopefully play like that. But God forbid if we, that's a little ways away from now. So I don't know if we'll remember, but 
Because we don't think about these things in the heat of the moment when it happens that quickly. Like that, like that, like that. But we'll see. We'll see. But yeah, but back to the point, you know, we slept all day Saturday and Sunday, which is why we missed the Spurs home opener and the Ford 400. But, you know, and that's why we were wide awake on Monday and we were in a great mood. So therefore, the Spurs, you know, came from behind on Saturday and beat the cheating McDouchebags, you know, um... And where they survived a, ga a game tying attempt to send it overtime on on that last you know Houston possession, but would history repeat itself this time? See, it, uh, and, 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 and no matter what, how uh, in terms of Spurs win, no matter how it happens, well, turns out we did, they didn't. But it was a it, it did at the same time because it was a carbon copy, carbon copy and paste um Saturday night's game. Because Houston got off to our commanding lead early. Because Jalen Green and Fred Van Fleet, a former Raptor champion with She That Shall Not Be Named, the fraud in Toronto in 2019, just couldn't miss. I mean, Wemby, you know, needs to do better with his mismatches when, you know, well, playing on, on both ends or someone that, you know, like l a little less than half his size, you know. Someone in the comments thread of a video mentioned this, and they had a good point, you know. And logo threes will only go if you're feeling confident, and if you, it's actually it's actually guaranteed and worth you know firing. Just like you know against Denver last year, when Denver the def then defending champions choked away a, a big ass lead to us, Wemby and the Spurs. Well, he, he I guess I give that that shot that last that particular game. Gave him that much confidence to the point where he could just chuck it up whenever he felt like he was confident. Luckily, it's not all the time, but, you know, logo threes are not going to go every time, you know, unless you're Steph Curry. When Ben Yamba is not, is not there yet to, like, consistently hit logo threes. I want this man to succeed, but shout out to Demario Hubbard, a.k.a. Mr. All-Star. Um... I know he gets a lot of, you know, snide comments on his Facebook for, you know, hating on Wemby. And, you know, but that hate is not like pure hate out of spite and wanting to see him fail, like another commenter said. No, he wants them to be great, just like how Tim Duncan and David Robinson used to be as number one over draft picks, draft picks San Antonio. But at the same time, he just wants them to be better than he really needs to be, than he really actually is, you know. Stop taking long jumpers and, you know, go in the paint more like a, a true big man, no matter how skinny or how much weight you have, you know, how much weight, how much you weigh, whether you're skinny or like, you know, big, like, you know, Shaq, Robinson, Duncan, or hell, people like Nesterovic and Mohammed, who after Robinson retired, but, you know, um, yeah, so that's, I agree with that. I, I used to d think he was hating too. But as soon as I saw like on the when he didn't look like himself against that season opener against you know Mavericks in Dallas, I see what he means now. So therefore, shout out to Demario, aka Mister All Star, for pointing this out. Yeah, get, I mean you can shoot jumpers all you want, but don't do it as much. Like balance between shooting jumpers, even three pointers, but also balance you know going in the paint like a true big because you'll dominate a lot of you know other bigs in there. I mean, look, you made the Shingoon, the the cheating McDouchebags rookie center, and that's uh, that's supposed to be a equivalent of you. Their equivalent of you look like a little kid on Saturday. I mean, he did look like a little kid on yesterday too, last night. But it was not even because of you this time. It was because he just had a bad game, you know. You know, um, you know, he was like mediocre at best the other night when i know he sucked in the pre in this first game he was like rusty he got bad he got you know turned on the jet saturday night and he just cooled off a little bit last night so therefore it's second year learning curve i mean he'll eventually figure it out on a consistent basis because he figured out pretty quickly as a rookie last year so i'm pretty sure he'll figure it out like a, a lot just as quickly as a sophomore this year to pick up where he left off from last year um but yeah, my back to the game itself. Um, yeah, I didn't see why Dylan Brooks was getting booed and why a lot of people don't like him. Cause he tried to fight Wemby on Saturday, and then I think yo know, he tried to cause some tr trouble yesterday too. I think he tried to pick a fight with Sohan um, too, and you know Sohan wasn't backing down. I think another fight had broken out too, 
Actually, no, a fight om actually another fight almost broke out, but nobody wants to mess with Steven Adams because, you know, he's actually one of the nicest guys in the league, no matter who he plays for. So I can't remember who was trying to f almost was look like they were going to fight. I might have been Kelden. I don't remember. But he saw it with Steven Adams, like, oh, I better fuck off. So therefore, and Steven Adams like, you're good. You're good, buddy. You're good. It I think they were trying to go for the jump ball, I think. Yeah, but... Yeah, Dylan Brooks is a dirty-ass player. I don't even care what team he plays for. He could play for a team I dis I like, but it's not my favorite. I still don't like him. I didn't like him in Memphis. And I don't like him with the cheating McDouchebags. So, fuck Dylan Brooks. So, I mean, what more can you ask for? No wonder, like, you know, half the other, the, all the other teams outside of us boo him every time he touches the ball. Because you're listening closely in the, in the, after, the, after the game started and Houston had their first offensive possession. They all, he got booed quite a bit. I mean, it was a carbon copy, carbon copy paste of Saturday night. You know, when the second half started, you know, Malachi Branham was like, you know, fight like, you know, it was like a flamethrower. I remember jokingly put on Facebook, let's go DA and split as in Derek Anderson, Tiago Spitter, the original one and 22. I'm like, oops, never mind. And speaking of 22, we'll do a brief, um, We'll do a brief, you know, little, you know, little segment of him a little, little later. So, but Malachi Branham did, was, did really as good as, you know, the guy who had it before, like in the beginning and splitter and hell of a lot better than the guy in the middle who we'll get to in a minute that, you know, just wasn't good for us in San Antonio. So he was like lighting it up like Lizzie Green from downtown. He and Wemby were like a force to be reckoned with in the second half. We mounted a comeback. We got within at least minimum of four, three, two points, but we could never get over the hump because we never let in that game to start to finish. Houston did a wonderful job holding us off, you know, keeping us from getting over the hump and, you know, just keep keeping us at bay to make sure we never grabbed the lead because if we would have grabbed the lead at least once, we would have, it would have had a lot of momentum. I decided we would have, the momentum would have swung the other way and we would have ran away with it. And that's not what the cheating McDouchebags wanted. I know the cheating McDouchebags at one point were living, what once lived up to their nickname by, you know, I think somebody, I can't remember if it was Jalen Green or Jalen, oh, that, what was his name? Bar Brunson, it was number 10, it was number 10, the guy who, no, it wasn't even Brooks who got into a fight with, um, with, um, with, um, Sohan, it was the, there was the number 10 for, um, um, Houston, I can't remember his name, someone correct me in the comments, but he was the one that got into a fight with, with Sohan, but it was a guy who, I think it was Singun who, who, like, tried to push Wemby out, out his way, he was back in the paint, and the rest never called it, so, that, that should have been an offensive foul. Rockets just living up to his nickname, cheating McDouchebags. But I think the guy in the number 10 Houston is Brunson. I don't remember, but someone in the comments could correct me on that. That would be great. But, you know, I thought it was over, like, like sway sooner than it was. But then when CP3 hit that four-point play, bang, bang, Tito Puente, and one, and I thought it would when it was called a flagrant one, what I thought was going to happen, but this would this, this would happen. This would have been called a, it would have been a flagrant two if this would have been happened. If this would have been the result, but I thought he was going to shoot two free throws and then do the four one for the four point play for a three point swing and would have got us within one or probably tied the game. I don't remember what the score was at the time, but we were right there. But that only happens if it's a flagrant two, if anything. How are you going to commit a flagrant two behind the three-point line? And, you know, yeah, so flagrant one, he just shot the one free throw. And there was a crucial possession where Wemby had a, had a fadeaway jump shot before that, I think. But then Houston responded, you know, as they always did. Every time we try to make a charge, uh, grab our first lead of the game, you know. A Van Fleet hit a three pointer, and then you know that that's always all she wrote. So therefore, I mean, it was a hell of an effort, but it wasn't enough for the win to like make that same magic two nights in a row. So the next game I will be tuning into is the Halloween matinee again the in in Utah against the Jazz because tomorrow night we got fall randomness to wrap up the warm weather season in Sandy Ridge before it really starts getting cold, either after the three-day Sandy Ridge finale next week, or, you know, 
when immediately when the friend Thanksgiving, the two week Thanksgiving festivities start for Friday, where all the friends givings and the Thanksgivings with the, all the families across the nation, you know, if we don't get the walk off, but if we get the walk off before the, all the Thanksgiving festivities start, then great. At least we'll know we know that to conserve our health this time and um, you know, dress accordingly in case of an some uh, like you know in case of some semi chilly weather. So, therefore, go Spurs, go. Go Wemby, go. I mean, best of luck to Bill Land at his retirement from Fox Southwest. Oh, Mama, Wemby, Yamba, go Bill, go. And it'll always be Fox Southwest to me. I will never call, I never, I never called it Bally. And I will never call it FanDuel Sports, FanDuel Sports Network. It'll always be Fox Sports Southwest to me in my book. And I will die on that hill because fuck name changes and everything they fucking stand for. Now, before we go, there's a little thing I just wanted to address about a particular spur. Um, I, I'm going to even be ashamed to call him a spur at this point, And you'll see why. I announced his retirement today. What's this I hear? Rudy Gay announces retirement from the NBA? Well, what do you know? That talentless hack, who, like, after, after his prime, obviously, who didn't do shit in San Antonio, except for that, you know, game winner he had against Phoenix in the twin board. Should have been Parker's last, you know, run with us in 2018, 2019. I get to beat the Suns to, like, you know, save us from choking away that game. But other than that, what, what else did he do in San Antonio besides, you know, Giving the 22 a bad name of, you know, and giving Splitter a bad name, which, you know, he makes Malachi Branham look like, you know, David Robinson, you know, in this case, you know. All he did was stink up the joint in San Antonio, you know, you know and, you know, slow down the youth movement. You know, Vassell and Trey Jones, especially Vassell was, as rookies, as a rookie, were, he were lucky to get, be getting some, you know, decent minutes with that, that, Clown, you know, that talentless hack, that chump, you know, clogging up the team along with the other vets that had no business being there, along with, you know, players that had no business being there getting the minutes they had that belonged belong to younger and more athletic and better players than them. So, therefore, um, yeah, the king of shitting it up um, is let, retired from the NBA and we're smoking that Rudy Gay pack. So, therefore, and they say, one to spur, always a spur. Yeah, that may be true for most people, but I'm sorry, Rudy Gay is not true Spurs material. Because, like I said, all he did was stink up the joint in San Antonio and um, slow down the youth movement in the Alamo, Del Alamo City and the 2020-2021 COVID, I mean, vaccine-filled season. So, therefore, good riddance to that hack. So, don't let the door hit you in the ass on the way out. Um, again, get the fuck out of here The king of, to the king of shitting it up. That's all I'm going to say for now. I will see you all tomorrow for the fall randomness to wrap up everything up before it really gets cold. So I have a good night tonight and a better day tomorrow. Take care, everyone. Good night. See you all for that next video, whenever that may be, which will be fall randomness tomorrow and the Spurs game review. Well, that might have to be after the haircut video on Friday. So, therefore, I will, like, you know, do a re game review. Um going over the Halloween game after, you know, we get to the haircut because it's a nine o'clock game and I'm not going to have enough time after the game to make a review. I want to have some downtime and the game starts at the game against Oklahoma City against the Thunder and OKC starts at 930. I'm like, hell no, I'm not st nine o'clock is the earliest I can like, you know, start a Spurs game. But I ain't staying 30. No, I ain't staying up all night for that crap. I stay up past that time. But it doesn't mean I'm going to stay up all night in case the game goes gets crazy and goes into overtime and clock you know, goes into my bedtime. So, and I risk being tired in the morning and all that other stuff. But, you know, and plus we're going to be exhausted from being outside anyway. So, what's the point? But, anyway... Time for me to get the fuck off this thing. That way we can, you know, get this uploaded and then you'll start focusing on tomorrow's video and tomorrow's like duties and you know, gotta get the gotta gotta get the job done. So see you later everyone. Go Spurs go and fuck Rudy Gay. This copyrighted broadcast of the National Basketball Association may not be retransmitted, reproduced, rebroadcast, or otherwise distributed or used in any form without the express written consent of the NBA.